The other day, the Variety Club of Leeds fated the heroes, cup and all. Over the years, we, their supporters, have learned to live with their weaknesses and disappointments. And now, in their moment of triumph, and at the last minute, I came on as substitute to propose their toast. You can imagine my delight on Friday night, after Sport 2, I was sitting in the studio, and somebody came and said, Don Revy's on the phone. I thought, it'd be a big chance. <laughs> I said, I'm putting on a bit of weight, I'm getting on a bit. But this is my chance. <laughs> I went, hello, Don. He says, hello, Colin. I said, I'm a plane. He says, no. <laughs> I've decided to pick Jack. He's a bit younger than you. And I think he's got the edge. So I said, fair enough. He said, but I want you to speak at the dinner. Will you propose the toast of Leeds United? I thought I'd be honoured. And that's why I'm here. Hunter the hard man. He once came home with a leg battered, bruised and bitten. He was worried. He couldn't remember whose it was. To me, they're not just great footballers. They're mates. Billy Bremner, with a smashing Scottish wife who loves Yorkshire. There's no accounting for taste. Paul Maidley and the players who've created so much of the spectacle and the drama. Big Jack, who looked through me after they'd lost to Wolves last season. I just didn't see, he told me. I was that choked. Eddie Gray, Alan Clark, Peter Lorimer, and the rest. The legend about them is one of cold efficiency, but the truth is they're essentially human, and their frailties and their vulnerability to stress make my affection for them all the stronger. Hands up all the Yorkshiremen here, please. All the Yorkshiremen. Thank you. Are there any Lancastrians present? Oh, yeah, that should be enough. <laughs> well, it's for the benefit of the non-Northerners that I've got to explain something. You see, Lancashire men only come to Yorkshire in raiding parties. <laughs> However, I came on one of these raiding parties. I think it was to watch Wigan and Leeds. You know, that's the man's game. They play up the road. <laughs> and... Um, I looked around and I don't know, there was something about the place that I liked. Something unique. You see, Leeds is a small town city. When you think of Leeds, you can contain it. You can conceive it in your mind. You can't Liverpool or Manchester. They're too big, they're too sprawling. Not Leeds. But the trouble with Leeds is that unlike Liverpool and Manchester, is it can't believe in itself, it can't think big, it can't believe that it has at Ellen Road the finest football team in England and in its purple patches the finest football team in the world. But they're less an orchestra than a brass band. <laughs> Players and men with their feet firmly on the ground. All right, the city takes them in its stride, but at least it enables them to lead normal lives amongst their own people in the heart of the town they play for. They're not one of your glamour teams. Imagine a Pelle or a Eusebio or even the best playing dominoes three times a week in the pub with the lads. I've watched them play football, I've watched them play dominoes. The other day I even trained with them. Down. Right, come on, let's go. Everybody down, come on. No good going in fast burst and then dying. Doesn't do you any good. Doesn't do you any good at all. Right, come on, everybody up. Lap and a quarter. Right, off we go then. Hell! <laughs> Get a stretcher ready for him, I think. Oh, yeah. Paul, 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 Paul,
Right, walk to the next one if you're finished. It's hard labour. It made me sick, literally. Just turn over. Turn over. Just bend your knees if you feel sick. Just bend your knees and get down. Come on, kneel down. No, kneel down, right, mate. You feel better. Feel better like that. Oh, come on. Yeah. That's it. Hold on. Just kneel down. Good lad. Couldn't they make it so that it's more bloody enjoyable, so there's more point to it, other than just running from post to post? Well, that's an idea, that is why there is a point to it, because you go from post to post. We don't do any straight running now. It's all checks and turns and sprints. It's all short, sharp stuff rather than heavy stuff. Les must have explained that to you Yeah, but morning. it's very mechanical, isn't it? It's just a series of bloody exercises. Well, you've got to do exercises in some way or other, so why not straight check runs and it's the way you're playing a game? Were you sick at the beginning of the season? No, this season I've been sick of you. Everybody's sick, haven't you? Everybody is sick, have been sick. So you got to, I mean, in other words, you can't enjoy the game unless you get yourself into peak fitness. Yeah. I think the important years are between 15 and uh, 20. Yeah. I think your body develops in that time, and I think if you look after yourself, mostly, I don't say you can let yourself go after that, but if you look after yourself between 15 and 20, then you keep yourself reasonable after that. I mean, yeah. your body, you've got your body in the right way while you're maturing, and then when you get to 26, you should be only coming on to your best then. Your body yeah. should be getting stronger, not weaker. Yeah. Most of the things we do is in competition, you know. I mean, I don't, you notice, but you don't only really run. Singly, you run against somebody. Yeah. So everything's in competition. The competition's great. Everybody likes competition, I think. You all try to beat the other fellow a little bit. I even had the traditional lead soap massage from the manager. There's plenty of rub here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, you know. Yeah, I tell you what, I might be any good at football, but it's improved my sex life, has it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, go, you just treat your players like bloody machines, really, don't you? You're just servicing them, giving them an oil change and uh, keeping them tuned up. This is it, Colin. You've got to try and just keep them sharpened up and win playing two games a week. Yeah. Uh, they had a good three quarters now this morning, as you know, and then they get this massage and then ten minutes in the sauna bath, a nice cold shower and hot bath. Yeah. Uh, and it freshens them up. Yeah. How do you feel after the... Well, I was sick Session. as a dog, you know. That's <laughs> <laughs> all so we noticed. Yeah. <laughs> Revy seems almost as a policy to involve himself with his players in everything. The gaffer, like, he, he's one of the boys up to a certain extent, you know. And then we do, he doesn't even have to say to us that's enough. You know, maybe we're taking the mickey out of him or something like that, you know. But you know, you get to a certain pitch and that's it. You can go no further because then he'll calm down you like a ton of bricks, like, you know. The club's very much a patriarchal society. Revy runs it with an engaging Dickensian mixture of affection and soul-cleansing discipline. He has, despite his demand for the highest professional standards, a priestly serenity about him, like the father who runs the Bowery Boys baseball team. His character, his own almost too quaint Victorian disciplines, seem to reflect on his players, spick and span, hairstyles, even when long, with a certain precise neatness, as though at his request. Uh, haircuts, well, um, this is a little pad of mine, I suppose. Um, I don't like short back and sides. Um, I don't like to think I'm too much of a square. But I think if it's a professional sport and the professional athletes, and I think footballers are, yeah. then they should set the image to, uh, to young schoolboys that this is the right way to look um, as professional footballers. If you have long hair down your neck yeah. on a Saturday, Colin, and it's raining, you know, it's sweating, or some, some summer's afternoon like it is at the moment, it can't be comfortable. It, they, it can't be, they can't be thinking just as clearly as they would be if they were nice and trimmed up and uh, they looked the part and felt the part. I don't believe that for a minute, but <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the well. boss. <laughs> he treats you like men, you know, and I think this is how he gets his respect. But there's so many responsibilities, I feel, in, in, in a manager's job. I think it starts when you first take a so young schoolboy, a 15-year-old, um, away from home. Um, because we feel if we bring them up right off the park, then we have a chance of getting things right on the park, and we bring them up as good citizens also, as, as well as uh, good footballers. To Revy, Leeds is a vocation. If I ever felt that they were going to slack off and not give every ounce they'd got uh, in training sessions and matches for each other, like we've always worked together, then I think this is one thing that why I would leave this, um, this club. But every year, they come bouncing back, and then we all set off again, and off we go again. And we play all the way for United. Season after season, the pressure. 
Johnny Giles reckons it's the near misses that's kept them at the top, fan their ambition, kept it white hot. <laughs> I don't believe it for a minute. Still, year after year, often after bitter disappointment, they come back to withstand the pressure, the grind, the apparent anti-climax, say, of this run-of-the-mill midweek game this season against Ipswich. I felt like shouting, you're a great side, give yourselves a chance. Well, you're lucky to get away with three goals scored against your home, you know, and you still got a point. I mean, look at it that way. Yeah, but if you look at the other way, we scored three goals at home, we still didn't get two points. I mean, that's, uh, that's another way of looking at it. I think all the lads are sick tonight. Are they? Really, yeah. Oh, there's plenty of time to go, though, isn't there? There it's is, but the I mean, the only... Match, the flipping season, you've got all bloody miserable faces. Yeah, but you don't expect to drop points at home like tonight. No, you're only human, for God's sake. You know, you're not a machine, are you? You're entertainers, well, what are you worrying about? That would be, John. John, it'd be a great game to watch, for the spectators' point of view. I think it might have been good to watch, but the lads didn't think we played well. I didn't think we played well. I thought we well, played I'm... rubbish tonight. Yeah. Well, let's put it this way, Colin. At the end of the season, if we look back and we've lost the league by a point, the crowd won't remember going home happy tonight. We'll remember the night that we dropped a pint tips switch at home. All right, off you go. Hey, I'll build you have got it this time. Come on, five minutes, we'll have it dead right. There's something intangible, something you can't put your finger on that makes Leeds a great team, yet prevents the sky becoming their limit. There's something about them of the small town team, of the wizard and hotspur. Perhaps that's why they feel unknowingly a little insecure and inhibited at times. Perhaps the continual responsibility they feel, not to the game, but to the result, stifles even the team with such rare talent. Now have a look around, have a look. Don't let people run behind you, across you. Get yourself behind the ball. Come on, Roy, get You know, I can't help wishing that Don Revy would lengthen the reins a little, that the training was more human, more individual. If they'd won that 1970 treble, I think they might have realised just how good they are and have cut loose.